Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, depending on when you're actually watching this. My name is Ian Middleton, I'm a travel and landscape photographer and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Ian Middleton Photography or check out my website ianmiddletonphotography.com. Okay, this is one of my quick photography tips and what I'm going to do today is show you how to adjust your highlights and your shadows while at the same time uh, checking for and avoiding clipping your shadows and your highlights. Okay, so for, for those of you who are not too sure about how the histogram works, let me explain very quickly. The histogram represents the tonal range of your image and it starts at zero on the left side and zero is your darkest color, your darkest point, your shadows. Now, anything below zero is completely black. There's no detail there at all. And on the left, right side of your histogram are your highlights. Now, the maximum value here is 255. That would be your whitest point, your brightest point. Anything beyond 255 is completely white with no detail. Okay, so the histogram shows you the amount of pixels at a particular tonal value across that range. It shows you the amount of pixels that contain that tonal value. Now, what you can see here on the left, here, there's an area that is completely blank. Now that means that from zero to that point, maybe 10, 15 or something, there are no pixels that contain those tonal values. So essentially where the graph ends here, this is the darkest point of your image, but there's still a gap. Same over here, the graph ends here, and that tells you that from here to 255, where the, uh, the value uh, ends, there's no pixels. There's no pixels with that tonal value. So there's a big gap there. And so what we can actually do, uh, which also has the consequence of boosting the contrast, of your uh, image is to adjust the whites and the blacks. Essentially what we can do is we can spread the detail that's here across the full tonal range of the graph. So the way that we do that is to adjust the white slider. So if we push the white slider to the right you can see that we're now pushing the graph up towards the edge here. See? Now you'll notice that if we push it too far, yeah, it goes off the edge and it, it clips the highlights. So you can see that this little triangle up here illuminates. And this is your highlight clipping warning. If you click it, then the areas that are burned out, that are clipped, are highlighted in red on your picture. So it's a good way to see uh, where in your picture your your highlights are burned out and that essentially means that these areas are completely white there's no detail there at all it's just completely white if we untick it we can we can clearly see because we've pushed it so far if we pull it back uh, you can see that we reach that point where the triangle is no longer illuminated that means that we're just at that point. If we push it a little bit more, we can go to that point just where it illuminates red. If we pull it back, now we've pushed it as far as we can go, but we haven't burned out any of the highlights. We haven't clipped any of the highlights. Okay. Now another way to do this is to hold down the Alt key and slide the slider. And when we do that, our screen goes black. And we push it until we reach that point where we start to see all these areas down here in yellow or red. This is, again, th it's the same effect. It's uh, indicating to us where, where we're clipping our highlights, where we're burning out these areas. So again, we can pull it back just to that point, say 51, 52, 54. Now we're starting to see the clipping. Pull it back, 53. 52, now we know we've reached that maximum point. We've gone as far as we can go without burning out our highlights. 
The same thing for the blacks. Again, we can hold down the Alt key and slide the black slider to the left and we get a white screen. And we keep on sliding that until we start to see these areas down here. Uh, the blue areas are now highlighting where we are clipping our shadows. And the same up in the up in the corner here we can see the shadow clipping warning has illuminated. Again if we click it we can see little areas down here in uh, magenta that are indicating the areas where we've clipped our shadows where it's completely black no detail. So again hold down our alt key we can come back come back just to that point where we no longer see any blue and we can also see here that we have the, our highlight clipping uh, sorry our uh, shadow clipping warning is no longer illuminated uh, we can even push it a little bit more if we want to again 49 50 there we go 52 it's come on take it back to 50 we've reached our maximum point so we've now spread the detail across the graph and we've got a more uh, vibrant contrasty image as a result as you can see if we if I f flick those back you can see the difference uh, now if I open we could do the same thing in Photoshop if I open the image in Photoshop itself then we can I'll show you how we can do that with from within Photoshop so if you're not working on a raw file if you're working on a TIFF file or a JPEG file which you really shouldn't but if you are you can still do the same thing here but you can do it from within Photoshop itself and Lightroom as I said you can do the same thing there so here's our image so within Photoshop we go to image adjustments levels and this brings up this thing here push this over to the side so we can see our image now we can do the same thing here and the only difference is this time we move the sliders on the left and the right and again we hold down the alt key so hold down the alt key slide your slider towards the edge of the graph where the where it starts and again see the moment we start to clip we get these little red blotches come up so we pull it back just until we no longer see that same here on the left we get the white screen we pull this up to the edge of the graph and we push it and push it until we start seeing the blue and the magenta down in the corner there pull it back just to that point there we go now we see we've gone as far as we can go again untick the preview tick the preview to see the difference looks much better and then we can okay that so there you go simple well i hope you've enjoyed this tip and found it very useful and uh, feel free to check out my website uh, for other tips and tutorials and videos. Okay, take it easy. Catch you later.